So, at the time of writing this, people here in Australia have been more abusive towards pharmacy staff. As someone who spent a couple of years working in pharmacy, I thought I'd share with you my experience with difficult customers. To give you guys some backstory onto how I landed this job, I actually had a friend who was a pharmacist at the time, and he let me work for two weeks as sort of like a work experience or job trial sort of thing, and that helped me land a job here at a pharmacy shed, let's Call it that. Can't use the real name. Whatever. So there are three areas that you guys need to know about, and most of the time you're rarely locked into one area at a time, so you can move up and stuff like that, unless you're absolute poo-poo at your job. So the first area is called the till or the register, which is basically where you get paid to be yelled at by customers. The second area is what we call the floor, and that's basically where you walk around and ask customers if they need a hand with anything. And at first it's fun because you have so much enthusiasm, but let me tell you, after about like six months of doing it at most, you'll find that it's really boring and really tedious. Now the third area is called the dispensary area. Now this has two sub areas. First sub area we'll call the counter, short for dispensary counter. From the customer's point of view, you usually just wait in line and then you just hand over your script and then specify how many of the drug you wanted and what brand if you even had a preference. However on the receiving end for some reason I found it really intimidating when I first started working there and I think it's just because people were really smiling and they usually just dump a whole phone book worth of scripts on you and then they basically just start walking away before they're telling you what you want and then when it's time for you to hand it back to them they get really really angry and then they like, act like you did something wrong like burn their house down. Worst is when there's customers who look really sweet and nice on the outside but then they end up being the reincarnation of Satan. The counter is also where we keep some fancy medication that isn't on prescription but can still be dangerous if misused properly so that's why the pharmacist still needs to okay that before giving it out to the customer. But see in order to work in the DC counter you need a fancy internet certificate in order to work behind there. Most of the time on the counter your duties are usually just listening to customers describe their whole life story to you just to ask a simple question as to where the Panadol would be. The other night 99% is usually just people just making up a story just letting you know that they just want that one thing and just give it to them now. You get taken back at first when you deal with these customers but sometimes you get people who ask for 10 inhalers. The thing is stockpiling these things makes you look really sketchy even though they're trying not to be sketchy and they even say the words I'm not sketchy I promise. Now the second sub area is called the dispensary. From the outside this is the place where you you know stick the sticker on the boxes of the drugs and yeah. But see the common misconception with that area is that we don't just stick the sticker on the boxes. The hardest thing is to actually just make sure that the instructions are correct, the dose is correct, and to make sure that the patient just doesn't die. But see from the customer point of view I can explain why people are really cranky and impatient when going to a chemist, especially if you're sick or in pain and you're coming from a doctor and you basically just want to get well soon or sleep. It's kind of hard on the other side when you have like a bunch of other people staring at you. How chemists was one of the chemists that didn't have a TV in the waiting area, so I don't blame people for doing that. Once again, that's a problem with management, not with the customers themselves, so I don't know why I told you that, but anyways. Basically, the rundown of working in the dispensary is person at the counter hands you the script, you pick it up, scan the barcode of the script that's usually printed on there, and then you just type out the instructions or make sure there's no typos, print off a label, grab the box, stick the label on the box, bam, easy peasy, put it in the plastic tub, slide it over to the pharmacist, and then just get started working on the next one. Sometimes on really, really slow nights, all you need to do is just do one script and then you can go back on Google or on YouTube or on your phone or play Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Link. Most of the time though, it's not even that complicated. Sometimes when you scan it and it's from your own chemist, all the instructions are there, especially with repeats. All you need to do is just smash the enter key until stuff prints out. Most of the time, my duties were basically just using the stapler and grabbing more paper for the printer. That's basically it. That being said though, there are some Stone Age doctor's offices that don't even have printers? And you're telling me that a doctor can't even afford a printer? However, I am told that there are certain scripts that need to be handwritten for sort of like a legal thing, so I'm not including those in this case. But most of the time, the problem is that the barcode doesn't even scan because it's in chemist that you work for is a cheapskate, even though the owner drives a yellow Lamborghini. Now, one thing that I found with pharmacy, it's incredibly awkward interacting with customers that always come in at least 15 minutes before you open on a Sunday morning. Like seriously, you know we open at 9, it's on our website, and some of these people are repeat customers. I see them, I know them on the first name basis, and it's super awkward every single time. If people arrive before you, you have to lock the doors so that the customers don't start coming in grabbing stuff. I had one guy to tell me to use my car keys to tap on the glass to let them know that people are waiting outside, and I basically just said to him, hmm, we have security cameras at the back, they can see us, 
I'm not going to tap on the glass. And his response wasn't, oh, okay, yeah, of course, I understand. It's also before opening time, so yeah, I'm happy to wait a little longer. No, it was, don't worry, mate, you won't break the glass. I just said to him, nah, man, sorry, I'm not going to tap on the glass with my keys. I just think that's not what keys are designed for. Now that we have most of these areas down pat, most of my experience with annoying customers were in the dispensary and on the till, usually because you can't run away like you can on the floor and pretend you need to go to the bathroom or check something in the back for a customer or basically just keep walking laps around the shop. I can't use her real name, even though I don't know her real name. I've always called her the eye roll lady. So every time she comes in, she always causes a ruckus. She grabs a can of some fiber supplement thing that's the size of like a Milo tin. And then she requests it to be put on a tax receipt because it's for her son or something. And it doesn't even mix it with water. She just gives him like four teaspoons worth of dry powder, which is basically like a glorified cinnamon challenge before that was even a thing. And she throws a tantrum every time there isn't any on the shelf. Thing is, not every chemist carries it. And if we do, we can only order a certain amount at a time because they're in such high demand. But also I heard that they're really expensive to order in as well. Like we don't make a lot of profit out of it. So she walks up to the till with her receipt, metal tin of her Milo diet fiber cinnamon supplement thing, and two other shop items with a sticker on it that shows the patient's name, address, amount of items, and the price. We call this label the total label. So what I do is I pick up and I always do my classic robot greeting and she snarls at me and I basically just shrug it off because you know, it's a beautiful day outside, birds are chirping, and I literally count the cars on the road. Sometimes you see a yellow Lamborghini. Now, with that being said, I run a little system of how I do things, and basically what I do is I double check the name on the computer, then the items that come up. Now, not just in pharmacy, but I'm sure in many other places you can order stuff ahead of time if we don't have it in stock, and then you just pay for it later. And I just attach a copy of the receipt when they pay for it in advance, and then I just hand it back to the dispensary later, and they just leave it on file there. Now, since I'm on the till, I have no choice but to assume that the people at the dispensary did their job properly. So then I say to her, okay, that comes to 124. How hard is it to count what is in front of you and scan it, put it in a bag, and that's it? In my head, I'm like, firstly, there's no barcode on the bag. And secondly, it says four items equals 124.50 on the total label. And there's four items on the bench in front of me. And the computer also says four items with 124.50 with your name and address on it. So I proceeded to direct her attention to the bag and then show the total label to her anyway. Then she just straight up refused to even look at the bag, let alone listen to me. We have a little bell at the till. And so I ring that just so someone can come over and just basically explain what's going on. You know, if it's an error on our end, then we'll fix it. If it's an error on her end, then I don't know. You pay for the thing like you normally do I guess but as this happens she just continued to give me an earful repeating the same thing over and over again I mean I can't just delete all of it and just put the amount that she's happy to pay and keep in mind there was a lady waiting behind her so in the time that she was trying to argue with me a lady who wasn't in the store walked in grabbed a basket grabbed some stuff stood behind her and she still hasn't left and I could have processed the lady behind her and then just go back to the crazy talk but I knew that as soon as soon as I just sort of breathed the wrong way, she was going to grow some devil horns. And at that point, I had enough, took a deep breath, and I broke eye contact with this lady. And then she accuses me of rolling my eyes at her. She says, don't you roll your eyes at me. That's extremely rude. How dare you? That is horrible. Is there someone I can speak to? Basically, she just said I was a crappy employee and a rude person for rolling my eyes at her. So I grabbed a bag, put her stuff in it, and I left it on the counter. I didn't hand it to her. I was done. She keeps going on about the same story about how it's rude to roll roll your eyes at someone and then picks it up, walks two steps and says, I can't believe you rolled your eyes at me. Now, some of you might be saying, but sure, your yeah, customer's always right and you should have taken it or sure, you yeah, shouldn't have let them get that far. You should have just ended the conversation. And every time I try to get a word in, she just cut me off and I couldn't just let her walk away with 85 bucks worth of stuff even if I decided to charge her for that stupid money. And since she refused to pay for the other stuff and no one was coming to help me, I spoke to the pharmacist about it later and she just left a note and just said, make sure she pays for the other stuff next time. See, what I ended up doing was, okay, you know what? I'll just charge you for literally that tent. So yeah, that's it for now. As I mentioned before, I had three years worth of stored experiences to talk about. I reckon I can at least pump out a couple more videos in the meantime. I honestly have so much more customers to talk about and probably those were the more memorable ones in that point in time. I just wanted to quickly touch on what I mentioned at the beginning of this video, which was, it was sad to think that people were doing the wrong thing and verbally and sometimes even physically abusing essential workers like chemist staff. So just be kind to everyone and remember that people have bad days too. It can be frustrating at times, but just remember to treat people like human beings rather than someone who's standing in the way of what you want. Now that I think about it, it is pharmacy stories, but most of these happen on the till. I guess it's kind of relevant because it all happened in